Hi guys, thanks for joining me today in the shop. Uh, today, I'm gonna put together a video and show you how I put my grip on my bows. So, uh, just a leather grip that's form-fitting to your, your handle so that it's got a, a really good, firm uh, fit to your bow and the contours that you assigned your grip. And then in addition to that, adding in uh, built up leather uh, arrow shelves. So you can see we wanted this to be something we could shoot off of either side and having put in these arrow rests, I can shoot off both my thumb and my finger with this particular bow. Um, you will see that it is contoured specifically to be held in your right hand. So it is a right handed bow to be sure, uh, but it does allow me to shoot off of either side, which was the intent with this bow. But if you hang around for just a moment, I will show you how I get uh, a very well forming leather grip on my bows. Okay guys, for this particular bow, step one is going to be getting our arrow shelf built up. And I'm always, or I'm in the habit of saving scrap leather for many of my projects that I do uh, just for this sort of purpose. There's always purposes for for small pieces of leather here and there. Uh, this is, I wanna say like seven or eight weight leather. So it's pretty thick and I should really only need one layer, you know, in combination with the, the cutout that I already have on this particular uh, grip to give just enough of a buildup to create that arrow rest that I'm looking for. So here's gonna be the first cutout and you can see I've kind of matched the, uh, arrow rest there with with the intersection of the leather so you can see the rest is right there and there's the width of the leather that manages to fit and then I've got another line drawn right here so what I'm going to do is keep all of this material intact while I work in just this little piece so we're gonna work this on a sander uh, to give it a sloped edge and just grind this down basically. That way we don't have to glue it onto the bow and then, you know, work it while it's on the bow because the bow is done. You know what I mean? It's, it is sanded, it's finished. Everything is done with this bow. I don't want to, I don't want to run the risk of doing any more uh, mill work on the bow itself. So we're going to do all of this in advance. Uh, we will cut this out, grind this down, finish this last cut, and then we're just gonna glue it directly on. And we're gonna make two of them, one for each side. And so I'm gonna do this same, this same idea with another piece of the leather here. Uh, we'll, we'll put that together as well. All right guys, so here we are at the uh, sander. I've got a 36 grip belt on there. Uh, our two pieces of leather uh, cut just a, a little ahead of that particular line that I, I had marked out there. We're going to just grind in a a bevel on here so that uh, it, it fits nicely on the grip and, and will not interfere with our our handle on uh, on the bow so this is uh, just a real quick process we'll, we'll take it down like I mentioned and then we'll cut it off so we want to leave this extra this extra here so we have something to handle while we're trying to grind and hopefully not grind up our fingers at the same time so uh, for the purposes of the video I'm going to go ahead and take the longer tabbed one so that I can kind of show you guys how this uh, works out. Okay, so as you can see, we got a nice edge on there and still got just enough work here, working piece of leather to uh, take our shelf away from. So this is going to then set underneath the, uh, the grip uh, when we put the, the leather cover on. Here is our piece cut away from the, the tab that we were using to protect our fingers. I have uh, just laid a little saliva down on here and burnished it against a, uh, the shaft of a screwdriver to just kind of get a 
a sheen. It's it's a it's a tactic in leather work, guys. If you do any leather work, you'll you'll understand what I'm talking about. But that's the process for burnishing an edge on leather, and this is going to fit right up against our arrow rest. The beautiful thing about leather is it's malleable to the degree that you can make it fit. You don't have to get a perfect cut on there. You can bend it to fit exactly exactly to your uh, given arrow rest. All right, so here's our finished product for the moment. Got uh, one side, two sides. That's how this uh, looks you know, on the grip, so. Uh, did just a little bit of fine tuning on here. Uh, put some, laid some tape down around the perimeter of the leather and did just a little bit of forming on these edges here that I didn't quite get uh, tapered down far enough for a smooth finish because a lot of this is gonna kind of, is going to project a little bit through the leather wrap that we put on it. So we gotta be prepared for that aspect as well. But uh, nice just enough rest on either side to keep that arrow off of your knuckles when you shoot so there's there's that part and we'll uh we'll move on from here and start putting on our leather wrap all right guys here's a quick little tip to help uh figure out how large a piece of leather to cut and what we want to do is get across the the widest part of the grip or the I guess the largest in circumference that we can find, it's either gonna be here or right across the uh, arrow rest portion. And take a piece of tape and run it from both, from, from one edge of the grip, the front of the grip, all the way around and to the, to the continuing edge over here. And that gives us our length right there that we know on the leather that we're gonna have to cut out, right? And so here's here's how long a piece we gotta cut. Um, and I'm, I'm going to make it four inches. You know, we'll, we'll get a straight straight edge across here. We'll go down four inches and cut out just a, a rectangular piece on our uh, leather. And uh, from there, we'll we'll put our our or prepare prepare that for our grip. Uh, I'm using a piece of pig hide here. Uh, it is a pretty, it's a pretty thick mill piece. I would say probably if this were like a veg tan uh, piece of leather, it'd be like a two or three weight. So it's it's got a little bit of thickness to it, which is going to aid in our uh, arrow rests here when we we get it done. Uh, this particular material is is pretty cool um, when you. We'll be wet molding it, and so I think a lot of guys feel like they got to get everything all formed out and cut to form and etc. But no, we just need a square piece, you know, right corners on everything uh, that's going to fold together square, so that we can put a a, a lace on the the uh, you know on the seam here, so that we can we can we got a good clean seam. That's that's what we're looking for and pretty much nothing more. Uh, this particular leather expands an awful lot when it's wet, which means it contracts an awful lot as it dries. Uh, and I I've, I've, uh, wasn't thinking as much about the fact that it's such a heavy, uh, such a thick mill. Uh, generally, I will fold over these corners to the insides and glue them down, right? I'll take and, and put a shave off this edge, clean it up, fold this over, fold this over, right? Punch in our, our lace holes and then put it all together. And what that does is gives a, a nice little bump right through the knuckles on the front side of your uh, grip here. Uh, but since it's such a, such a thick piece, I'm gonna struggle to get it to bend over like that and and behave for me to, to get holes in there. So I'm, I'm gonna end up 
I'm gonna end up taking this down just a little bit and getting it to meet exactly edge to edge here on the thickest part of the grip. Now, don't let the fact that you've got a lot of contours in here uh, cloud the, the whole process here because when as this shrinks, we can mold it and we will get it to conform to everything that's going on here with this grip and hopefully not so much right in here, get it to bridge some of those gaps. But in any event, I'm going to recut this so that it's just, just enough to wrap wrap straight together and then um, we will punch our punch our lacing holes in there wet mold it and go from there so uh, there you go and you can use any any kind of lightweight leather uh, I would tell you that a lot of times I'm using something more like this it's very thin very pliable uh, this is actually leather that I got from a leather jacket so I bought a leather jacket at the Goodwill store and just took the leather and turned them into turned them into panels and I, I really feel like that's a great place to get leather uh, for this sort of thing molds very well uh, but I'm going for this thicker mill and this stuff shrinks a lot this uh, pig skin so uh, that's that's what I chose to go with here because I am looking for a little extra thickness at the uh, arrow rests. So we've got matching punches across both both seams here. And I left a fairly probably about a quarter of an inch from the edge of the, the leather, so we should get a nice half inch uh, stitch across the front of this this grip here. Alright, so we are basically ready at this point to um, Put this onto our onto the bow. Uh, for uh, for the next step, we're going to go ahead and soak this guy in some warm water, uh, hot water. Really, I mean, about as not so hot that I can't handle my hand being underneath it, but like hot enough that you would be washing your hands, uh, having handled say a COVID something or another. Nice hot water. That's what we want this in. And we'll uh, fill the sink basin probably, you know, an inch deep and let this soak in there for a couple, three or four minutes. You guys, it uh, helps to have some leather sewing needles. They're not sharp on their tip, but they, they will work through these uh, hole punches that we did. And a little bit of wax is also helpful. Uh, in sewing this thing up. So this will this will just kind of keep everything together for you. Um, now, when cutting your length, you want to cut a length that is almost really about four times, if not more, four times and then some of the length of your stitch, uh, just to give yourself a lot of extra room. Once Once you get everything, you get down to the bottom of the the um, stitch you need to have enough there to work with to you know tie off and etc so um, and enough to work in between stitches all right so I'm not going to uh, spend a lot of time going through the whole stitching process I think everybody knows how to lace a pair of shoes because essentially that's what this is um, I have already soaked this in water and as a matter of fact I didn't soak it for minutes, I soaked it for seconds, probably somewhere along the lines of uh, 15 or 20 seconds. And what you'll find is that this leather will stretch way beyond it's the, what we cut it to as you start working with it. And so uh, 
it gives us the, the, the time right now to get everything stitched, just kind of as it starts to dry. I did take a moment to punch my initials into the edge of the grip here. I've never done this before, so I thought that'd be really kind of cool. Nice little touch. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and stitch this down to the bottom here. I'm not going to film it, but uh, that's, uh, that's step next. So I'll be right back. Okay, guys, so I know I said that everybody knows how to tie a shoe, and for the most part, uh, I think I'm correct on that. But there's a lot of different ways to tie a shoe, so, I mean, you can look up different uh, lacing methods, etc. I just do a straight, normal lace, and I would tell you, you want to do it the same every time so you don't end up with something like this stitch right here, where on the back side, I went over and under the wrong direction. And so got all the way down to the bottom I wasn't going to go back to change that one that one stitch right there now you can see that we've got some real loose leather up here around the grip and in that the uh, the leather itself is not conforming too well to the grip at all it is tight down at the base all right and so uh, this is the part where now we count on the shrinking nature of leather uh, to come to our rescue here and we can we can really mold this stuff to go the direction we want it to go like up here at the around the arrow rests etc so what i have devised and really what would work great in this scenario would be to take a um ace bandage and wrap this thing with an ace bandage because an ace bandage is going to to compress uh, but i don't have an ace bandage so i just took a you know a cotton t-shirt and cut a cut a length of it here and what i'm going to do is just just wrap this and the reason i i use a shirt like this it's twofold one it's not going to leave marks in the leather like say like a string would if you were to wrap this with a string then you get those little string marks across there uh, secondly, it's not really thick, and for that reason, I can then come back with like a heat gun and heat up this whole, heat it right through the right through the cotton. And I will. I'll, I'll run a a uh, um. I'll run a heat gun across that just to heat up that leather and help help the molding process along. All right, so I'm just going to tape this down. I love blue tape. It is like the third the third hand you you always are looking for. So now we know that we've got the compression where we need it, and that the leather is is up tight against the grip in every portion. And I will. I will then take and, and run my heat gun across it, and not, not to like do any major heat heating up, but the idea here is to, is to warm up the leather, kind of drive some of that moisture out, and to help mold it to the shape that we want. Now that leather is gonna shrink a little bit in different, in some areas where we don't want it to, and so we'll have to pay particular attention around our, our arrow rest, and make sure that we manipulate that the way we want it, and uh and etc so i'm gonna stop right here i'm gonna go ahead and probably tie off these loose ends on the grip itself a little dot a little dab of uh, super glue at the at the base of that so they don't come untied and uh do some heat heat work on here and ultimately it's going to need to set pretty much like this uh, i usually let it set overnight and come back in the morning and things are done I mean, it's just done done. So there you go. All right, guys, one real quick tip. Uh, I have my uh, bow resting here at the uh, edge of my workbench. It's wrapped uh, to hold the uh, leather down tight to conform to the grip. Uh, as we allow this to dehydrate, of course, the, the leather is going to shrink and tighten up on the on the uh, bow itself and, and that's what we're after and this is just a real quick tip on how to speed up the drying process so I'm right on a fan I've got a fan running here 
right on that grip, the number one uh, source of dehydration is air movement. So heat will do one thing, right? I mean, heat will just make hot, you know, make moist hot, but air movement drives that moisture away from your bow. If you're drying wood, uh, air movement is by far and away the most effective means to speed up that drying process. Um, stagnate, stagnation didn't help anything. So there you go. All right, guys, here's our uh, finished product. You can see that the uh, leather has pretty much conformed to the shape of the grip pretty well. We've got uh, good arrow shelves on both the thumb side and the, the finger side. Uh, added in circular strike plates. I just like the way those those look on my bows. That's kind of the my thing of late. Uh, so uh, that wraps up the uh, the uh, handle wrap video. Thanks for uh, watching, guys, and uh, appreciate you taking time out uh, to uh, uh, visit with me. Be sure to like and subscribe to the video and uh, get uh, updates for future videos. I've got a lot more. A lot more builds yet to come, so thanks again. I will see you next time around.